Okay, uh, next I'm going to have a look at the barrels. Again, we're going to be sending these off for a re possibly a skim, and to have that fin mended. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the tappets, also known as cam followers, uh, from the uh, from the cylinder there, so we can have a look. And also, we're going to have this all blasted and painted, so obviously these have got to come out anyway. So I'll take them out now so I can see what condition they're in. I'm not going to probably put this on camera. There's just, whoops, a daisy. So there's some lock wire. So you cut that off there. And then just unscrew these two screws there. And then there's the there's like a little plate that they hold in that stops the tablets from falling out. So when we take those two screws out, then that'll then the holding plate comes out and the tappets will come out as well. So when I've got them out, we'll have a look at. Them. Okay, so we've pulled the uh, tappets out of the barrels, and uh, so you just undo the two screws, and there's like a little holding plate, and then they just push push out. Uh, they just push out the bottom there. Okay, and then I've labelled them all. Uh, so I know which one's which comes out of where and I've had a quick look and there's definite signs of scoring of wear on the sides of the tappets and uh, you're also looking for wear on the bottom which is actually where it where they run actually on the camshaft and there is there's definitely some sort of ridges uh, I think these are stellite tipped yeah so so the bottom the, the bottom uh, sort of edge is a different metal a much harder metal than the rest of the actual tappet so you can get that i can probably get that polished out there's not much of a ridge there there's a ridge on one of them i noticed there was a bit of a ridge i thought there was um but that can be polished i'm a bit more worried about the actual size of the tappets where they slide up and down in the barrels obviously there's a fair bit of wear there so maybe they'll need replacing but again what i'll do is i will send them off with the barrels and get the engineer's opinion on that again perhaps they can just be polished the sides and the bottoms to get rid of any wear or it could be they need replacing but as soon as you take them out label them up then you know uh, you know which is which if they do go back out, back in so the barrels yeah i think generally we're just going to have cleaned up possibly last cleaned and they're all oily and a bit horrible and then uh, re, uh, then mend this fin and then uh, painted black oh, and obviously a rebore and possibly a head skin will check how flat the head is the, 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 well, the top the, sorry the mating top um, surface of the barrels where it mates on with the head could have that skin but it looks probably okay it's got a rather strange looking thing there which I noticed when I took it off you know it's almost like something was left in there like a label or something you can see it's got like a you know like a label edge on it and there's a definite you know there's i can definitely feel a ridge so it could just need cleaning it you know could need skimming and what that what that sort of was there i don't know but i'm sure whatever it was shouldn't be there that's a bit weird uh yeah uh, but basically I'm just going to send that off and we'll see what the engineers say okay then I'm also sending the crankshaft off to the uh, engineers as I think I've said so they're going to grind the crank down they need to split the crank I think to regrind it anyway they'll be checking it's all clean inside which I'm fairly sure it is there's an oil gallery that goes all the way through with a bigger chamber in the middle they check all the oil galleries all the oil uh, lines are free oil ways and um and putting it back together for me and then uh i've i've left the main the main bearing inner races on the crankshaft and i'm also going to send off the outer races uh to the engineer because it may be that we're keeping these um keep reusing these bearings now you might be thinking why on earth would i reuse bearings when i've got the whole engine apart simply because these appear to be very good bearings they're working they appear genuine and if there's nothing wrong with them then it may well be better to put them back in rather than use new because if you use new there's a chance that something might be wrong for instance they could be fake even buying from a reputable 
supplier somewhere along the supply chain could have sneaked fake ones in and duped people and they're selling them and believing them to be genuine, but they're not. Number one. Number two, they could be genuine bearings, but they could have a fault with them. We've all bought something along the line somewhere brand new that's been faulty. You have to send it back. Well, obviously, you've got faulty bearings, then you've got to take the whole engine apart again. Um, and Or they, they could be misaligned or whatever. Whereas we know that these, it felt really nice to crank sharp. So the way it was turning, so it could be we reuse these. So I'm sending them off together with the protected inner races still on the crankshaft. Get, again, get the engineer's opinion. Sending off the camshaft because, of course, we've got that, um, where was it? No, a little bit better. The, uh, the sheared bolt in the end. I'm fairly sure the cam's okay, so we'll probably be reusing that unless the owner wants to put in a different camshaft. There are you know, more modern camshafts available. That's up to him. And there's the head. So I think in three different boxes, we're going to be sending off the head, the crankshaft and with the other bits and then the, uh, and then the, and then the barrels. Uh, unfortunately, it's a three month turnaround. So that's why I'm rushing to try and get these off to the engineer. So they get in the queue and then, um, you know, then, then to get that, then it's going to be a three month wait. Whilst that's happening, I will then um, take the gearbox apart, which I'm deliberately not doing now because I want to get the, all these off to the engineers as soon as I can to get in the queue. Then we'll turn to the gearbox and the uh, swinging arm, etc. When when all this has been sent off, because there's a three month gap from this going off to it coming back again. Hopefully, all, all done. Ooh, there we go. Uh, here we are. All the uh... Everything boxed up, ready to go off to the engineers. So we've got the uh, cylinder head, and we've got the uh, crankshaft, and we've got the cylinder barrels. All for various work to be done, uh, and and also I've sent off the tappets and the main bearings for inspection. See what he thinks about them. So uh, yeah, that's all, all. They're all ready to go. The only problem is it's probably about three months uh, lead time. To give it its proper name so it's, you know he's quoted me about three months which is obviously a bit of a pain but you know it is what it is so that's why i've been trying to get these um you know boxed up as soon as possible get them sent away uh, but then you know that's why i've been rushing i haven't even touched the gearbox yet because that's not going so i just wanted to get these you know in the queue as soon as i could so then i'll get on i can get on other parts like the gearbox and so on and and then taking the oil pump apart and so on and so on Whilst uh, whilst these are away, and also I'll be getting the outer casings polished, the gearbox and the timing cover and the primary chain case covered, and we'll also be buying the new parts that we need so that when these do come back, then we're ready to get on with assembly.